John Hanna had just finished a good day's work on the farm and thought back to a bad night at Legion Field in September 1970. We were totally embarrassed. It was it was just as, as good a whooping as a guy could ever take. There's been a lot made of that game, you know that. And wasn't that much to make of it. We were a bad team. Hanna was an offensive lineman, Terry Rowell a defensive lineman on that 1970 team, an all-white tied team that got trounced 42-21 by USC's all-black backfield, the first in D1 history. Quarterback Jimmy Jones, halfback Clarence Davis, and fullback Sam Bam Cunningham, who bowled over Bama for 135 yards and two touchdowns. There was no stopping Cunningham. I mean, it was like he was just walking walking over the top of us. But be honest with you, the one that really hurt us was a running back named Clarence Davis. And believe it or not, he was from Birmingham. Davis moved to California when he was 11. The future Oakland Raiders scored two touchdowns that night at Legion Field. You were losing a lot of black athletes coming out of Alabama and going elsewhere uh, because the climate here just wasn't um, really receptive for the uh, black athletes at that particular time. It was more than a game. It was a game changer for Bear Bryant and the Tide program. A wake-up call to fans that the time for integrating the football team was now. It showed them that we needed athletes uh, no matter what race. Uh, you know, it, it doesn't matter about color. It just it matters about what's on the inside of the man. Men like Wilbur Jackson of Ozark. In 1970, he was the first black athlete to get a football scholarship from Alabama. Back then, freshmen were ineligible to play for the varsity. Jackson is convinced Bryant scheduled the USC game to make a point. It was just something else that he needed to try to show the state that this is where it's going and this is where we need to be if we are going to keep up. The tie went 6-5 and five in 1970, their second straight five-loss season. The Bear was wondering if he had lost his touch. If he felt like he'd done a bad job and had mentioned retiring because he, he couldn't do the job or wasn't, wasn't doing the right job anymore. The more pressure he put on himself, the more pressure he put on anybody around him. Uh, plain unpleasant. When fall camp began in 1971, with a rematch with USC looming in LA, Bryant made a bold move. Coach Bryant came in and said, we got a lot of work to do, we're gonna change the offense. Bryant scrapped the pro set and borrowed the wishbone offense from his friend, Texas coach Darrell Royal, who had used it to win national titles in 1969 and 1970. The quarterback should have the big picture throughout this execution. It was a good move, a uh, little bit scary on, on trying to learn a new offense when you got three or four weeks to, to do it to face Southern Cal. The offense was a perfect fit for two guys that were born to run, halfback Johnny Musso, the Italian stallion, and quarterback Terry Davis. I was blessed with some some terrific athletic ability, I think, uh, quick hands and feet, they say, and, and uh, it just made it, it, it was not a hard offense for me to learn how to run. He was the best guy for the wishbone at that particular time. If he got in trouble, he could always pitch it out, or he'd draw everybody to him, then he'd pitch it out. And when he did it that way, a lot of times, you were just running free. Great lengths were taken to keep the switch a secret, even putting up curtains at practice. On September 10, 1971, the curtain was raised on the wishbone. USC was blindsided. The Tide marched 59 yards with their opening possession. Musso to the five. Musso is out of bounds at about the one-yard line. Oh, they said he got into the end zone. They didn't know what to do. You could see confusion. Yeah. You know, they didn't know how to stop it. Uh, and, and, they, and you could see the frustration. I think the third play of the game, we ran the option play and I was able to, I kept it and, and was able to knock off maybe 15 or 18 yards or something. So, you know, that kind of, it kind of settled everything down. Okay, this is gonna be okay, we'll be able to do this. A 91 yard touchdown drive put the tide up 17 nothing. Musso flashed his way into the end zone for a touchdown. Johnny Musso picking up where he left off last year. The wishbone churned out 302 yards, but it was the defense with a Rowell fumble recovery that sealed the 17-10 win. To win it, it meant everything. It just got us in a different attitude. Hey, we're pretty good. See what we can do with it. Two games, four decades ago. Two games that changed the course of Alabama football history. From 1971 to 1982, the Tide won 124 games and three national titles. Bryant proved he hadn't lost his touch after all. I think he's the best it ever was. Can't see anybody being any better. Jeff Spiegel, ABC 3340 Sports. You, you forgot your roll tide.